Hello and welcome back to New Vegas everybody. Today we're going to be taking a look at the throwing knives. A weapon that not a lot of people even realize is in New Vegas because these things are so dang rare to actually get. So the throwing knives are one of the few throwing weapons in the game but they're definitely not the most popular and they're definitely not one of the most common. That would probably go into throwing spears that are the most common and likely the most popular too. Throwing knives are extremely rare and you can only really buy them from a couple of vendors around the wasteland. So you're probably not going to be finding these very often, especially if you're not paying attention because certain vendors sell them like Crimson Caravan can sell them, uh, Mick and Ralph can sell them, there's a couple of other people that can sell them, but most people don't sell a whole lot of these. They sell like five to ten of them max and you're going to need quite a lot of these to make them really effective since they're definitely more of a spam weapon than anything else. This is also kind of a weird weapon to talk about because I didn't know if I want to include other throwing weapons in this, but I feel like we'll just keep this video to the throwing knife. We'll include all the axes in one video, we'll include all the spears in one video, and yeah, we'll, we'll just do that for the throwing weapons. This one's kind of like the oddball out. So the throwing knife requires zero melee to use effectively and only one strength. So any character can use throwing knives effectively, which is pretty awesome. These are also a normal sneak in weapon. I believe Mr. Holdout on the strip actually sells these. So you don't even need any sneak. You can just sneak these in regardless of your sneak level, which is pretty cool. The throwing knives do 15 damage per hit, which is fairly low, but it's not the worst for a melee weapon. They do 48 damage per second. You can actually throw these fairly quick at enemies and it feels pretty satisfying to do so. This does 15 crit damage, so it's not super high there. Although it does have a two times crit modifier, so it has an extra chance of critting, which is awesome. Uh, on a melee crit build, this isn't too bad. This costs 20 action points to use, making it pretty decent in an action points build, assuming you get enough of these to actually throw them, but you can throw quite a lot of them in VATS. VATS with the thrown weapons does feel kind of weird though, because the enemies aren't always slowed down in VATS the same way you are, and sometimes that makes it so when your person would throw this, it might count as like throwing over something, or if an enemy is like really right up in your face, your person can just toss it right past them, and it seems to just like hit the floor next to them somewhere so that can be kind of frustrating if that happens uh, as well as since this is a throwing melee weapon it's not like regular melee where there's just the either you have a zero percent chance of hitting or the 95 percent chance of hitting an enemy this is based on limbs so you don't just hit the entire body you can actually pick where you want to throw this at it so that can be kind of useful these weigh half weight each so they're the same as like grenades which does also make them kind of awkward because you're probably going to want to carry a lot of these around and whereas like grenades you can carry around a couple, maybe a dozen of them, and it's not really going to weigh you down. Carrying around like 20, 30, maybe even 50 throwing knives will actually weigh you down a decent amount. You can uh, kind of help this if you have the perk pack rat. That does help because then you'll cut the weight in half. But even then, you're still going to be probably stockpiling a bunch of these to actually kind of make use of them. For the pros of these, they actually do have pretty good damage per second, and they are a sneak-in weapon, which is really cool. You don't need any perks or anything for it, or, or I guess uh, up to level 50 with sneak with it, so that is pretty awesome. The major con to the throwing knives, though, is that they're extremely rare. You're going to have to buy these and then just like wait for shops to reset if you want to keep using them, or you're going to have to spawn them in like I did for this video, because otherwise it's just it's going to take you forever to collect enough throwing knives to kind of make them effective in even just one combat situation against regular enemies. There's also some perks that can help with the throwing knives too. Certain melee perks do actually help with throwing knives, like Piercing Strike does. It actually gives armor breaking on this and all throwing weapons, so that is pretty cool if you want to take that. But then something like Super Slam doesn't affect these at all because you can't knock down enemies with the throwing weapons. So that one won't help unless you're going with a mixed melee build where you're actually using regular melee and thrown melee, in which case then that one's still really good. I don't think Slayer affects these. I could be wrong about that. I haven't actually really tested it, but I don't think so because that would be attack speed and not really like thrown speed. Heave Ho does work with this where you can throw these further than you otherwise would, but there is something that's kind of bizarre about like throwing knives and throwing axes, and that's the way in which your person kind of throws them or the way in which they kind of tumble through the air. Because normally they'll throw them and they'll tumble end over end at an enemy, but after so long, then they'll just start flipping to horizontally and spinning like this at an enemy. And it gets really strange and the hitbox seems kind of wonky, especially in that like middle area where it's turning the weapon. I don't know why that is. It doesn't affect throwing spears, but it does affect throwing axes and throwing knives. So that's just something to kind of keep in mind. You could also take the trade at the very start of the game called loose cannon. This makes it so you can throw these faster than you otherwise would. And this goes for all throwing weapons like grenades and stuff too. But you do have less range with them, which again can feel really awkward with thrown melee weapons 
at least the knives and the axes, not so much the spears. Those are pretty consistent too, but it does get kind of strange if you're not used to that. So it might be something you want to take. It might be something you just want to avoid entirely because I don't know of anybody that's just doing like a throwing knife only run unless you're spawning in a whole bunch of throwing knives, which could be very fun, but I don't see it working very practically in terms of like you have to run up to Mick and Ralph's, wait a while and then buy whatever throwing knives they have, run over the Crimson Caravan, buy whatever knives they have and just you know, like keep cycling vendors as much as possible until you actually have enough throwing knives to start your playthrough. Uh, I guess you'd also need to have money for that too, which could be kind of an issue. And it makes it so throwing knives are kind of an awkward weapon to use in general. For an overall rating on my tier list, I would put the throwing knives into like D tier for practical use. They're not terrible by any means. It's just, it's super difficult to get enough of them to really make them work. If they were way more readily available, if you could buy a couple hundred from regular vendors, they'd probably go up quite a bit. They'd probably go up to like C or B tier because they're very fun to use and they can be decently effective, especially in like the sneak in areas. It's just, you rarely get to use them, if ever get to use them. I don't know of any playthrough that I've really done where I have gotten to use them when I haven't specifically went out of my way to get them. Today we're going to be taking a look at some more throwing weapons. So today we're going to be taking a look at all the throwing axes, of which there is four of. Some of these weapons are a little bit rare, just like the throwing knives that we covered not too long ago. The throwing axes are also about as rare as them, so they're kind of difficult to find. They basically use the same model as the hatchet, the regular one-handed axe, which is another weapon that's fairly rare throughout the wasteland too. You can buy these from quite a few different stores, or sort of. You can buy them from like Mick and Ralph's, you can buy them from the Crimson Care van. They might have a couple of them. If you really want to get the most out of these though, you're going to have to stockpile quite a lot of them or you're going to have to spawn them in like I did for the footage back here. So first up, let's talk about the throwing axe and then we'll talk about the DLC axes as well. The throwing axe requires 25 melee and one strength to wield. So basically any melee character is going to be able to wield this as soon as you can get it because you're likely not going to be finding these until you actually get to New Vegas or if you wanted to run up and talk to the great con since they can sell them too. But again, they're not going to sell very many of them. Either way, 25 melee is pretty manageable and one strength is perfect. This does 20 damage on hit, which is okay. That's all right for a throwing weapon or a melee weapon. 18 damage per second. These do take a little bit of time for a swing up as well as you actually have the distance where they have to throw. So you're not going to have tons of DPS. And if enemies are actually like right up next to you, it's kind of hard to hit these. Sometimes you'll just throw over the top of them and that's really awkward. As well as at a certain distance, then any of these just disappear. So <laughs> you have to make sure that you're throwing them at the right distance. This does 20 damage on crit, which is pretty decent. That's uh, the same as its regular damage. So that's kind of to be expected. Has a one times crit modifier, which is perfectly fine. Nothing crazy there. Costs 22 action points, which is pretty low. The throwing axes are actually pretty decent in vats and that does help them. As well as just like the throwing knives, this isn't like regular melee where you just either hit the body or don't hit them at all. This is to where you can hit them in any of their limbs, same way you would with guns or energy weapons. Most energy weapons at least. Uh, and I guess all guns would count for that, I think. I can't think of one that doesn't. Uh, these weigh two weight each, which is kind of heavy for throwing weapons. Most throwing weapons don't weigh that much. Most throwing weapons are like half a weight and that's what kind of makes them nice. The throwing axes are two weight, so you can cut them in half with pack rat and that helps, but it's still one weight. So you're still gonna have to carry around a lot of these to make them kind of useful and they're kind of kind of be heavy, which is weird. Also, all of the axes have bonus limb damage on them too. All throwing axes get a 1.5 times uh, extra limb damage. And if you dismember something with the axes, then you just instantly kill them. So that's pretty nice. For the general pros of the throwing axes, these are pretty fun and they have decent DPS. Uh, kind of all the axes do, even though the DPS seems a little bit low in terms of like practical DPS, it's still fairly decent at like medium range where you'd be throwing these at enemies. They also work pretty well against melee enemies since you can usually outpace melee enemies and just keep chucking them into them. That's pretty nice. For the cons, these are extremely rare. They're very hard to find. They're just difficult all the way around. The DLC axes that we're going to be talking about here in a second are much easier to find in most cases. So they're not as bad, but the throwing axe, for whatever reason, is really hard to find. They also do kind of lowish damage, which may not matter, but it just might not be worth the weight to carry these around for the amount of damage that you're getting. So the throwing axes by themselves on my tier list, I think I'd put them into like C tier. They're okay, so long as you can get enough of them. Similar to like throwing knives, where throwing knives would honestly be quite a bit higher, probably better than the throwing axes. But these things are so dang rare to actually find that it's just not super practical to actually be using them in the first place. Let's move on to the DLC axes. First up, let's talk about the Proton Axe and the Inverse Proton Axe, which is the unique version of this. You can find this in Old World Blues. And these ones you can actually, at least the Proton Axes, you can find pretty regularly. 
They're around quite a few spots on the map. Sometimes the lobotomites can have them, so you can have an infinite supply of them, which is pretty awesome. You can also use these to fix up the full-size proton axe too, which is kind of cool. So if you find that and you find one of these, you can fix it up super easy, which is awesome. You don't need jury rigging for that either. Proton axe also requires 25 melee and one strength in order to wield it, which is the same as the regular axe, nothing crazy there. The Proton Axe does 40 damage per hit, which is quite a bit better. That's double the Throwing Axe. 32 damage per second, which is still kind of low, and that's just because of the, the throw time. These all have the same throw time, so they have roughly the same DPS, uh, at least ratio to damage. This one does 29 crit damage, which is kind of weird. I don't know why it has that damage. Usually crit damage is the same as regular damage, but this one's lower for some reason. One time script modifier, so that's normal. The regular Proton Axes only take 20 action points to use, which is also a little bit strange. They're the least action point intensive out of any of these throwing axes, which is good. Makes it so you can throw them more often. These ones also weigh less than the regular throwing axe at only one weight, and they still have the same limb damage that the other axes do, but these ones in particular do extra damage towards robots and power armor. They also kind of explode on hits, so they kind of have an AoE radius when they hit things too which makes it so their hitbox is kind of forgiving, and that's pretty nice. Um, these ones, I would say, are all around better than the regular throwing axes. They're also way more plentiful, because you always find these whenever you're going through Old World Blues. And these can be kind of useful in Old World Blues where you're fighting more robots, so throwing these at any of the robots can actually be pretty nice, whether that be like the Cyber Dogs, or Robo Brains, Securitrons, anything else that's there, the Robo Scorpions. The Proton Axes are actually pretty decent. These ones, I would say, are a bit better than the regular throwing axes. I would put them up a tier. I'd put them up in a B tier. They're still not super practical because they are still going to be kind of weighing you down. They are one of the more practical melee thrown weapons, but I don't think they're quite as practical as like throwing spears. Those would probably be the most. And they're decent all the way around, but nothing way crazy. They're pretty good against robots, though. The inverse axes are the unique versions of these, and these are extremely limited. You only get like six of these in the DLC, so make them count, I guess. These ones also require 25 melee and one strength, just like the regular proton axes. These ones do 60 damage on hit, so they do actually a good amount of damage. That's pretty high damage per hit. 53 damage per second, which is pretty decent. Also have a 29 damage crit, which is a little bit strange. One times crit modifier, take 22 action points to throw in vats, so they take a little bit more than the proton axes, the same as the throwing axes, and they also weigh one. They also do extra damage towards robots, and these ones are purple instead of blue. These ones are a straight upgrade from the proton axe, but like I said, you barely get any of them, so I'd also throw them up into B tier on my tier list. They're decent, but you're not going to notice a huge difference between them and the regular axes, probably because you're just not going to be able to use them. So maybe you want to keep one as a souvenir or something since they are limited. And then the last DLC axe is the Tomahawk. The Tomahawk requires 50 melee, which is more than the other ones, and it also requires 3 strength. The Tomahawk also looks very strange where it's just a pipe with some feathers, an electrical cord wrapped around it, and some railroad spikes that are being thrown. Strange combination for a, a Tomahawk, but I do like it. I think it's a really cool design for the Wasteland. These ones do 30 damage on hit. They do 20 damage per second, which is okay. 30 damage on crit, making them the highest crit axe out of any of the thrown axes, weirdly enough. These ones also have a one time script modifier, same as all the other ones. This costs 23 action points, so it costs the most action points, but it's still fairly low, so they're still good in VATs. And these ones do only weigh half a weight, which kind of makes them sort of like the best go to throwing axe, especially since Tomahawks are super common in Honest Hearts, at least the first time through. If you're going back to Honest Hearts, then they're not as common because most of the time the White Legs have them. So if you can get a bunch of these and carry them into the Wasteland, then that's kind of cool. They still do the extra limb damage as well as the regular axe, and it does make them a little bit better, at least better than the regular throwing axe, so I'd put these also up into B tier with the proton axes. The axes are all kind of interesting. They can all be decent in their own way. We should also probably talk about perks for these too, because I forgot about that. There are at least like three perks that kind of count towards these. First up would be Heave Ho. Heave Ho is pretty good because it just makes it so you can throw these further. And that's really nice for the throwing axes because the axes will topple end over end towards an enemy up to a certain point, And then they will start turning and going horizontal. It's kind of awkward once they start turning horizontal. You kind of want to be hitting things at that 
end over end stage, I find that just to be a lot easier and a lot more consistent when I'm hitting enemies. But Hevo makes so that distances a little bit further and that does help. Piercing Strike also helps with these because it can just give armor breaking to any of these, so that's pretty nice since they are still melee weapons. Things like Super Slam don't work for throwing weapons though, you can't just knock enemies down, although I wish you could because that would make it really really fun. Also the Cowboy perk helps with this. The Throwing Axes and the Tomahawks count towards Cowboy. The Proton and the Inverse Axes do not. So you do get more damage with those, making the Tomahawks even more practical than they already are. Proton Axes are still pretty good, Throwing Axes do get a little bit better with that, but again they're super rare. I don't think this would really change the placement of any of them, and the placement is usually based on how strong I think they can be in total. And the Throwing Axes can be decently strong, but they're not going to be incredibly strong. Um, compared to other like melee and unarmed weapons, especially more traditional ones more so than the throwing ones since once you throw these then that's kind of it and you just need to buy more of them. Anyway, would I recommend the throwing axes? Sure, you can get them uh, if you find them. They're pretty fun. Are they really strong? They're okay. So if you're going to the melee build, by all means try it out. If you're not going to the melee build, you still might want to chuck a couple at enemies. Proton axes are still pretty decent for old world blues. Tell me your thoughts on the throwing axe and all of its variants in the comments below, I'd love to hear that. Hello and welcome back to the channel everybody, welcome back to New Vegas, where today we're going to be taking a look at the throwing spears. There is two throwing spears, there's the regular throwing spear and there is the knife spear, because I figured we'd just kind of group these together since they're both fairly similar to one another. The throwing spear is probably going to be the most common throwing item that you find in the entire game, outside of like grenades because at least people like Caesar's Legion and the White Legs and Zion can't carry around throwing spears. The knife spear you can find in Dead Money, and the ghost people will have this on them, and it's one of the more common weapons that they will have as well. So let's go over the stats of the throwing spear, and we'll kind of go over the pros and cons to both of these. For the throwing spear, this one requires 25 melee and one strength wield, making it so basically any character can use throwing spears pretty effectively. It's not hard to get 25 melee, and even if you're going with like a guns build, you're probably going to get that just to get like cowboy with it. So most builds are going to be able to use this. The throwing spear does actually do a decent amount of damage per hit. It does 50 damage on hit, which is quite high. This one does 30 damage per second because you can't throw these super fast and there still is the travel time of the spear actually hitting the target. So not the most amount of damage per second, but they can be good for initiating a fight or ending a fight. This one does 50 crit damage on it, which is quite high. That's also pretty good if you're hitting crits with this, especially if you're hitting sneak crits with the throwing spears, then they are really good. And these do count as a silent weapon, like all the thrown melee weapons do, so that's kind of nice. This one has a one times crit modifier, so regular crits like it would normally get, which is the normal for most throwing weapons, so that is kind of nice. And throwing spears weigh half a weight, like most throwing items, which isn't too heavy, but you will probably need to carry around a decent amount of these to get kind of some value out of them. For the general pros of both of these spears, they do pretty high damage per hit, which is pretty nice. They are fairly easy to find in both areas. Throwing spears are probably the easiest to find throwing weapon in the game, again, besides the grenades. And the throwing knife spear is probably the easiest weapon to find in dead money because the ghost people tend to have it pretty often, so you can find a decent amount of these. They are both pretty decent on action point cost too, so if you want to be hitting limbs, then you absolutely can. And unlike throwing explosive weapons where you can't really target limbs, you can with the throwing spears, which is actually really good for the knife spear, because that one has extra limb damage on it. We'll talk about that when we go over the stats for that. The major con for these though is that you're going to have to get a lot of them to kind of make them useful, and that's going to weigh you down a decent amount. You can take something like Pack Rat. Pack Rat is really good for these and for any thrown weapon because that will cut its weight in half. So these go from half of a weight to a quarter of a weight. You can carry quite a bit more then, and they don't weigh you down as much. If you're going with a dedicated melee build, then the weight might actually not matter that much because you probably won't be carrying around a whole lot of different weapons. So you probably will have extra weight to spare. And if you want to carry around throwing weapons, that is an option. There are some perks too that help out with these. Heave Ho is really good because it makes it so you can throw these even faster or further faster, which is really good. That helps even with explosive weapons too, so that's nice. You have Piercing Strike that can help out with these as well because they still count as melee, so you can get armor breaking on them, so that's pretty good. Other melee perks don't really work with throwing spears, like Super Slam doesn't work and Slayer doesn't work. It doesn't give you a faster attack speed or anything like that, but Piercing Strike does actually help. And then you can also have Pack Rat just to cut the weight in half of these, which is pretty useful on any difficulty. More useful on the hardcore difficulty, but still of some use even in the regular difficulty, which is nice. For an overall rating for the Throwing Spear, I think I'm actually going to put the Throwing Spear up into A tier. I think it's actually good enough to be up there, because it's really the only practical thrown melee weapon that can really be of any use during a playthrough. 
even though the other ones can be pretty decent, like the throwing axes are fun, the throwing knives are very fun, you just don't get very many of them. You do at least get a decent amount of throwing spears, and they can be useful. There's no way I could put this all the way up into S tier, though, because it, it's just throwing builds are not very practical in the first place. Maybe throwing explosive builds, because you can at least make, like, the MFC grenades, and they can be fine. But throwing melee builds just aren't really that practical outside of mods making them more practical to where you can either buy more of them, make more of them, or to where you can have like uh, ones that respawn after so long too. I've seen mods for that as well. But in the base game, throwing spears are like the best you can get and still wouldn't be like an ideal choice for a melee build or for a throwing weapon build. Let's talk about the knife spear now that you find in dead money. This one also requires 25 melee and one strength to wield, same as the regular one. These ones do look a little bit different because it's just one of the cosmic knives that's been lashed onto a, a broom handle or something with rope and the ghost people will throw this at you. It can actually do decent damage if they hit you with it, although it also works the reverse too against ghost people. Since it has extra limb damage, that's really nice and that's usually what you want in most weapons when fighting the ghost people. So this one does 42 damage per hit, less than the regular spear, but still fairly high. 20 damage per second, they throw basically at the same speed, so it's going to have less DPS. This one does 42 damage on crit, same as its regular damage, and also pretty decent. One times crit modifier. For some reason, these take more action points to use at 28 rather than 24. I'm not sure why that is. I mean, they are more useful in bats in dead money, but outside of dead money, not as much. Then they're basically the same as throwing spears just a, a little bit weaker. These ones also weigh slightly more than regular spears for some odd reason. Rather than weighing half weight, they weigh 0 0.65 weight, so they can weigh you down even more than regular spears. They are, I guess, better than for pack rat because you're just getting more weight reduction from them. So that's kind of nice. You're still probably gonna have to carry around a decent amount of them. And these ones do double limb damage, which is really good for the ghost people because you want more limb damage against them since if you tear off a limb from them, then you automatically kill them. That can be really useful and these can be pretty decent in dead money if you want to be taking out the ghost people with them. They're not your best option because the bear trap fist still exists and I guess technically the, the fist of Rar exists. If you want to be taking that there then that one is the best option for dead money. Otherwise yeah the bear trap fist is still going to be better and this just because you get more attacks in faster. And if you're going with a melee build, you're probably also going with an unarmed build. So the knife spears are okay. You can at least get a decent amount of these in dead money and take them back to the wasteland so that you can kind of use them. It's not uncommon to have like 50 to 100 of these once you get back to the wasteland, especially if you're storing them somewhere in like the, the main villa of dead money. That way you can take them all back. I always store a bunch of my stuff in like the garbage can there so I can just take it right back. For an overall rating for the knife spear though, it would probably be lower. I would say this thing's like B tier. It's still somewhat practical, but it's uh, probably no more practical than like the throwing axes are for most uses. It's less useful than the throwing spear. The throwing spear you're going to find more of and there's not a limited amount of them. There's technically no limit on the knife spears either from dead money, but you can't go back to dead money. So actually getting them, it, it is basically limited then. The throwing spears, you can just keep killing like Caesar's Legion members and keep taking it off of them and using that. So I would say that these ones are the weaker option of them. You can also use the knife spears, just throwing ones to fix up the knife spear, which is the melee one in dead money. Same goes with the clean knife spear as well. If you weren't aware of that, then that's pretty awesome. You don't need jury rigging to do that either, that, which makes them even better in that regard. At least if you really like those weapons, I don't think those weapons are crazy either, but it is another option that you get. So would I recommend the throwing spear and the throwing knife spear? Throwing spear, yeah, throwing knife spear, sure, if you're in dead money. Outside of that, probably not. The throwing spear is the best thrown option or the thrown melee option in the game, but even then it's still kind of just okay in a lot of situations. Tell me your thoughts on the throwing spear down in the comments below. I really enjoy using this. Do you? And I hope to see you next time. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.